to be a pilgrim. I'm told you're a guest of Baha'u'llah, and that is such an overwhelming, inconceivable thing that I would be a guest of Baha'u'llah. Right now I'm on cloud nine, for the want of a better expression. I'm floating, but my feet is on the ground. <laughs> it's just wonderful to be here. I've been a Baha'i for 15 years and when I first became a Baha'i many people would say to me have you put your name down for pilgrimage and I would always say no, no, I'll know when the time is right and I wish now I had have come a long time before. I wish I had to put my name down at the beginning straight away. My desire now for the rest of my life will to be one day return and pray again at the, at the shrine of Baha'u'llah and of the Bab and of Abdul Baha. Baha'i pilgrimage marks a point in a person's life that's different from anything else they've ever experienced or anything else they've ever done. Pilgrimage is when Baha'is from all around the world come to the Holy Land to pay homage to Baha'u'llah, the Bab, and Abdul Baha, and they spend nine days visiting the holy places and visiting the holy shrines and uh, spend their time in prayer and meditation. It's a unique privilege to come and partake of this spiritual bounty. When I became a Baha'i, the first thing that I wanted to do was to be able to come on Baha'i pilgrimage because it's an important part of my growth process, of my deepening process, of my connection with the Baha'i faith. I've been a Baha'i all my life. And being here, I realized this is my spiritual lineage. And when you're here, you see every physical manifestation and remembrance of that. And it's empowering that you feel connected to the spiritual legacy of the faith. Before leaving uh, home for my pilgrimage, I was very hesitant my distance from the community and, uh, and from the faith itself had grown a lot in the last few years, and um, unfortunately, but uh, you know, I, I wasn't sure I was 100% deserving of this or even that it would be appropriate for me, whether I'd enjoy it or not. It was, you know, I had very mixed emotions and I was, I was unsure about everything, but um, something, something told me that it was, you know, that this would be a good thing to come with my family. So, you know, I put everything aside and decided I'd take a chance now I realize that it was a blessing and that it's given me a really good perspective on on the faith and on, on why I want to be a Baha'i and I'm really happy you know I've, I've, I've just gained uh, some kind of experience and some kind of uh, spiritual connection that I don't think I would have had at home if I just stayed home. When I told people at home that I was coming to Israel, you know, I got this reaction, oh, you're going to Israel, how can you go there? There's so much strife, aren't you afraid? <laughs> I said, you know, I'm going on a holy pilgrimage. So I've never worried or doubted this is our duty. And I've not had any fear the whole time I've been here. It's very moving to hear pilgrims tell stories of how they've sacrificed and uh, saved in order to make this journey. Mon visa fait sacrifice, beaucoup sacrifice. Mon visa, mon visa levé des heures du matin pour travailler. Nous allons jusqu'à Asfor simplement pour nous préparer pour le camino. Ça même tu quittes mon pays, c'est première fois qu'ils m'ont quitté mon pays et c'est tout pour une mission noble. Reality. 
For many people, pilgrimage will be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, so it's crucial that people prepare and think about and ready themselves for the experience that they'll have when they arrive in the Holy Land. And in fact, the Baha'i World Center sends people information in advance suggesting that there are passages from God Passes By by the Beloved Guardian, and that there are uh, books like Dr. Rue's book, The Door of Hope, which can help people understand some of the history of the places that they'll visit and to get a bit of a flavor for what's in store for them when they arrive. Well, in preparation for this pilgrimage, I started doing some of the reading. I started reading about the Baha'i Faith in the Holy Land and I tried to pray and just really become detached and selfless so I can go through this experience just drinking in. Avant de se tourner à la case, nous nous disons que nous avons un niveau nouveau. Nous avons un niveau qui est mauvais dans nos cœurs, nos esprits. Vraiment, nous avons un niveau du monde, un niveau. Il y a tout quelque chose qui est bien nouveau pour moi. To me, one of the most overwhelming experiences was you go to the Shrine of the Bab. I've never been in a holy site like that before. A tremendous feeling of uh, tranquility and peace and love. Just a wonderful, wonderful feeling. I think also the first time that we went to Baji and prayed in Baha'u'llah's Shrine. Oh, yes. With that many people all praying at the same time in the Shrine, there was a great uh, connection, a great spirituality that descended on all of us. When you enter inside the shrine, well, it's like you're lifted up to another world. It feels like the closest place you'll get on earth to heaven. And it feels like you're standing right next to Baha'u'llah. You're entering the presence of your Lord. And it's for us who, who are alive 150 years later, this is the closest we can come. You can't help yourself. You just feel tears flowing down your face. For me, it's been an intensely personal experience. But also to share that with my family, my wife, my two children. It's special beyond words. There's, there's, there's no way to talk about what it's done to us as a family. Я рыдал просто, и это, я, это было настолько, потому что сильным впечатлением были слезы, как бы, которые просто говорили: "Бахаула, ты со мной рядом, не не бросай меня, и я хочу быть с тобой всегда". When I walked into the shrine of Baha'u'llah, I anticipated walking in and being overcome with emotion, but actually I had found it really to be a struggle with myself. It seems almost like I took my relationship with Baha'u'llah more for granted, and the fact that I actually had to go to the shrine multiple times and really beg for closeness, because it was something I really desired. I have a much stronger relationship with Baha'u'llah but it required a lot of work on my part, and that was something that I really benefited from pilgrimage. I feel like I am beginning to turn more and more directly to Baha'u'llah, call out to him to assist me, to show me the way. I felt for the first time I was in conversation with Baha'u'llah. Um, and, and for me that has been very important because prayer has been very difficult. You know, trying to understand how to pray has been a lifelong learning experience.
The shrines are so powerful that oftentimes I can't even be in them very long. It's the gardens which my soul feels at rest in and when I walk in the gardens my soul feels like it's calming down and it's coming to peace. It's the spirit of God which you feel in the gardens that really affects my soul a lot. There's a power in the gardens and there's a spiritual calmness in the gardens and you become very conscious of it and feel a sense of awe and wonderment and very privileged to be here. In addition to visiting the Holy Shrines, Baha'i pilgrims have an opportunity to visit those places where Baha'u'llah lived and walked and to meditate on the significance of the life of the Blessed Beauty during his days in the Holy Land. Walking through Akka, I think of Baha'u'llah and Abdu'l-Baha. I felt like I was walking in their footsteps. I imagine them walking through the city, you know, just how it looked to them when they were there. Walking through this ancient city that so much has been written about, about it being blessed, and actually feeling the spirit of the history. I'm walking through time. You read about these places and you hear about these places, but to actually be in a spot where Baha'u'llah lived and suffered, it becomes a spiritual experience rather than an intellectual experience. The entire city of Akka is called the most great prison. But this is the barracks where Baha'u'llah was. Baha'u'llah spent two years, two months and five days in this cell. I felt so unworthy, so um, overwhelmed. Just, I wanted just to kiss the dust of that cell and just to uh, give my heart, my soul, my everything to Baha'u'llah. People had to suffer so much and they had to go through so much and then it kind of shows you that after everything that Baha'u'llah and the Baha'is went through, they'd still made it through. So then when I go back, it's going to be like everything that I was having trouble with, you know, I can do it too. Many times when pilgrims visit the places where Baha'u'llah lived, they have an opportunity to hear stories about Baha'u'llah and the Holy Family, and they gain a deeper understanding of what their lives were like here and the circumstances under which the faith was unfolding during those days in the Holy Land. Welcome to the mansion of Mazra'e. This is the first place where Baha'u'llah had the opportunity to live and be in greenery. Baha'u'llah was here for two years. Now, one day Baha'u'llah... I loved going to the house of Mazare because I've always remembered the story told about Baha'u'llah who spent those years in prison looking over the Mediterranean and not seeing a blade of grass and then realizing how Baha'u'llah must have felt when he first came there and saw this beauty and how his heart must have exalted. He 
has transformed the prison into a lofty mansion. So he was able to come from Akka, where he was imprisoned, and live in a lofty mansion. Though still a prisoner and an exile, we should remember always this. Bueno, yo estuve en el cuarto donde Bajola estaba mientras estaba viviendo aquí en la mansión de Baji y realmente es algo sensacional estar ahí en el mismo cuarto donde Bajola ha vivido por 13 años, los últimos 13 años de su vida y siempre quise estar en los lugares donde él ha estado y donde él ha ascendido al, al Upper Kingdom, entonces fue realmente Magnífico estar ahí. One of the bounties of pilgrimage is to be able to visit the International Archives building. The guardian of the Baha'i Faith, Shoghi Effendi, very lovingly set aside the relics belonging to the central figures of the faith and found a way to display them for the benefit of pilgrims. And among these items, one sees original tablets and texts of both the Bab and Baha'u'llah, the clothing that belong to the central figures of the faith, the sword of Mullah Hussein, and many other personal items. It's overwhelming for many people to see the number of artifacts that we have available in the archives, but for most people, the most precious experience is to view the portrait of Baha'u'llah and the portrait of the Bab. This experience only happens during pilgrimage, and for many people, it's profoundly moving. For 35 years, we've heard of Baha'u'llah, and then to see his portrait and to see the power that is described was, was breathtaking. Alors, euh, j'ai bien aimé rencontrer d'autres gens parce que euh, il n'y a pas qu'en Europe qu'il y a des Baha'is. Euh, parce que j'avais jamais vu euh, qu'il y avait autant de Baha'is autour du monde. Ça me fait plaisir de les rencontrer. pilgrimage group has been great you know you start out to be alone you look around you you don't know anybody uh, but then after a few hours actually you're sitting at a table and you're talking to somebody from South Carolina you talk to somebody who's from Jamaica somebody from Australia and really easily you you become friends احبای مختلف رو از سراسر دنیا دارن و اینکه چه چه جوری وقتی همدیگه رو می‌بینن انگار سال‌ها همه همدیگه رو می‌شناسن هم همچین همدیگه رو الله و عفای میگن و همدیگه رو بغض می‌کنن دیگه آدم اسمش همه همدیگه رو می‌شناسن انگار من نمی‌شناختم هیچ کس بعد ولی وقتی باهاشون برخورد می‌کنیم دیگه نه انگار واقعا آدم این احساس رو نسبت به همه احبا داره و چقدر احساس قشنگ و خوبی هست We listen to the teaching experiences of the other pilgrims how the faith is being spread, some of the difficulties they are experiencing in their, in their own country, which is similar to ours sometimes, and to see the enthusiasm and the love and the determination of the pilgrims to teach the cause of God. And this empowers you and gives you new vigor, a new hope. You say, yes, this faith is indeed the faith of the age. It sets out to unify mankind of all races, of all class, of all creeds. And when you see the cross-section of humanity that comes on pilgrimage, then you realize that this cause is indeed a unifying cause. One of the things about pilgrimage is that interesting is that everybody has expectations. And I think that sometimes people like to say you should feel this way or you should feel that way or it will feel this way and what I've come to realize over the past few days is it will feel different for everybody. Just like everyone's relationship with Baha'u'llah is different then your pilgrimage will be different. 
and it's to get the very most that you get out of it. For me, the pilgrimage has been about kind of understanding my spirituality, who I am as a Baha'i, where I'm going as a Baha'i, what my obligations are as a Baha'i. It's just allowed me to feel more connected and not sort of separate my work life or, you know, my social life with my Baha'i life. I feel that the Baha'i faith is my being. It's kind of like a journey, like I'm going on on my own, but also with my family. I've had conversations with my mother like, and my sister that I've never had before about just about their hopes and like what they pray for. It's not very common like, in my family to like, sort of talk about like, heart matters, but just the space just kind of brings it all up to the surface. Pilgrimage offers a time for spiritual rejuvenation and reflection. Since during pilgrimage you're free from the daily cares of your life, this is a great opportunity to reflect deeply. I am now 80 years old and I don't have much more time, so I feel that this pilgrimage was a gift truly a gift from Baha'u'llah. I feel much closer to the central figures, and I feel much closer to the House of Justice. It's really helping me focus on what in my everyday life I should be focusing on, really having to uh, re-examine my daily life and the fact that what I feel here and the devotion and level of commitment that I feel here is what I should feel back at home. When I focus so much on my, my wrongdoings or my shortcomings, I'm not focusing on what I, how I can serve the cause. And that's where my energy and focus needs to be. So I need to empty myself to beg for forgiveness and to forgive myself. I need to leave these things here. Let Baha'u'llah take care of them. He's much better at it than I am. And uh, think about how I can serve best. Since I've been here, I'm having a better understanding of how I might be able to participate and contribute to my community and to follow the guidance of the Universal House of Justice. Before I came on pilgrimage, I was very involved in the institute process, but I didn't have any spirit connected to those things. So I was just like going from thing to thing. I am now at places where Baha'u'llah was in or Abdu Baha was in, places where that spirit is and that just has to have an effect on you. It, it did me. So I know I'm bringing back from pilgrimage a spirit to infuse into the core elements or the administrative order that I'm a part of. I've been a Baha'i for 35 years and by coming on pilgrimage there's a perspective that I've never had before. Many people said, well why go to Israel at this time when you can just read it and see the pictures in the book? There is absolutely no comparison. Being here has been so unbelievably important to me, and I never ever would have had this understanding, this perception, and this insight unless I had been here in person. It has made all the difference to me. Coming to the end of the pilgrimage, of course, is sad because you don't want to leave this beautiful place and you don't want to leave your friends that you've made here, all the Baha'is that you've gotten so close to from all over the world. So it is a sad moment, but when I go home, it will go with me and it will, it will, it will come with me and I will be able to experience it again and again and again. You hope to come empty, you fill up. And then when you're full, there's this feeling of, okay, it's time to go back and give out. And so you have that strength, I think, to get on the plane and to go home and to realize that you have something to offer. I'm not a Muslim, but I'm not a Muslim. 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 This pilgrimage has had so many effects on me. I feel to run back and share these messages, share the stories I've learned, but especially now more than ever, I would like to serve. I'm more committed 
I'm more fired and I know what responsibility I have on my shoulders and I would like not to waste even any moment. Представляете, какое это ощущение, когда понимание того, что эти люди рассеются по всему миру и будут больше сил, больше энергии уделять служению вере, обучению вере. Being here as a pilgrim now confirms my faith in the handiwork of the Almighty God. Everybody is going to leave here really touched, really proud to be a Baha'i.